Hello everyone and welcome to our new section which is called Linked List. With this lecture, we begin a brand new section in which you will learn everything about Linked List. In this section, you will get a deep knowledge about Linked List which includes different types of Linked List, Linked List in the memory and performing various operations on different types of Linked List. In the first lecture, let's see what's a Linked List. So let's get started. By definition, linked list is a form of sequential collection, and it does not have to be in order. A linked list is made of independent nodes that may contain any type of data, and each node has a reference to the next node in the link. I know that you might not understand this definition from beginning, so to make things more understandable, let's take a real life example. In real life, linked list data structure resembles a train. Because, as in the linked list, the train is composed of nodes, which are cars, and where there is a link between these nodes. As you see from the pictures, these are cars, which is called nodes in the linked list, and these are links between these cars over here. In the linked list, we have links between nodes as well. Another feature of trains that confirms with linked list is that both of them have head and tail. In this case, train engine is head, and the last car in the train is tail. And we know that all these cars that have in train are independent. It means that if in case we don't need this compartment over here, we can remove it, but the train still work. Even we can add new compartment over here by linking these compartments over here. So this means that each compartment in the train is independent. Another feature is that we can enter any of these cars in a sequential manner, which means that while train is going, we cannot jump from this compartment over here to the, to the compartment over here. We have to go through this compartment and reach the last compartment over here. This is same in the linked list. If you want to reach the last node in the linked list, we have to traverse through all nodes to reach the last node. As mentioned in the definition of linked list, each element consists of two parts which are data and linked to the next node. And here in the train, we can easily see that in each car there are passengers and each car is linked to the next car with link. So it can be easily seen that train satisfies all properties of linked list. So we can say that the train is linked list. Now with this example we understand the analogy of linked list. Of course there are some properties of trains which do not conform with linked list. For instance the train compartments over here are contiguous which means that they are next to each other. But the linked list in memory is not contiguous. The nodes of linked list are not contiguous. In the world of computer science, the linked list looks like this. It can be easily seen that this structure resembles the structure of train over here. As in the train, we have head over here and tail over here. In case of train, the engine is head, but in case of linked list, we have reference here to the first node, which is called head. And we have cars in the train which carry passengers, and in the linked list, we have node which has values in it. These are the values of nodes. And we have links between this node which joins them together. Finally, the last node of linked list is called tail because the pointer here is null and there is no link to other nodes from this node over here. So if we summarize the components of the linked list, we can get the following. As we can see from this diagram over here, the, the first component of linked list is head, which has a reference to the first node in the list and there is no reference to this component over here. So there might be a question, why do we need head? So the answer is, if we don't know where the linked list starts, then how do we access the linked list element? So this is a must for locating a linked list in the memory. Then we have nodes over here, which are the elements of linked list. Node consists of two parts. The first part is value of node, and the second part is reference to the next node which creates a link between current node and next node. Okay, we understand that this reference joins the this current node to the next node. So what is the reference exactly? We know that when we allocate an element in the memory, it has a physical location in the RAM. Basically, the physical location to the next node is stored in the current node for referencing it. As you see, for example, this node's physical location is 1, 1. So this location is stored in the first node. So to have a reference to it. In this case, the location of this node over here, node 4, is 222. Two, two. So 222 two, two is stored in this node over here, which has reference to this node. So 
node 2 has reference to node 4 by using node 4's physical location which is 2 2 2 so when we visit for example this node over here we exactly know that where is the second node in the memory because in the first node we have the location of second node so the last component in the linked list is tail which is a reference to the last node here basically we store the physical location of last node so again here you might be interested why do we store this reference to last node why do we need a tail so if you want to insert an element at the end of linked list without tail we need to traverse through all these elements over here and come to the last node and insert an element over here and this is very time consuming operation it will take o n time complexity but by knowing the last element's address we can increase the efficiency of inserting an element at the end of linked list but this is not mandatory okay that's all for this video here we have learned analogy of linked list even though the trim example does not reflect all properties of linked list it's very good example to get basics of linked list now in the next video let's talk about what are the main differences between arrays and linked list the reason that we are comparing these two data structures is that both of them can do same operations on the data set so we need to identify differences and choose which one is efficient for our purposes see you in the next lecture